Hello, and welcome to Warren County Community College's simulation course on unmanned systems. In this case, we will be dealing mainly, if not fully, with unmanned aircraft systems. So, in this lesson, we are going to move away from stick flying to what is known as autonomous flying, or flying in a way where the drone is pre-programmed to execute a mission and then fulfill that mission afterwards. In order to do this, you're going to need to download another software that's available free to you online. Uh, the software is put out by Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. They paid to have this designed and they use it for their students, so we're going to use it for one lesson as well. If you go just simply to Google and type in E-R-A-U, the initials for Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, and the words Virtual Hub, and press return, the first thing that should come up is the trainme.erau.edu website with the virtual hub. If you were to pull on that, you'll come to this screen here, and you may, should probably look at the overview, look at the downloads and hardware requirements. There are some tutorials, frequently asked questions, etc. Once you've done that, you can elect to go to the Windows and Mac download. And it'll talk about the desktop download and installation. It'll tell you about the specifications. It'll tell you how to download for Windows or for Mac operating systems. I do not recommend for your course uh, that you use uh, the online uh, or version for uh, application version for uh, your iPhone or Android phone or a related iOS device or Android device. Note that this does take 80 millil megabytes in size uh, to um, download, and it does take a little bit of a time, about 15 minutes to download, depending on your internet connection. Uh, once you're here, do not pick the mobile download in the right-hand corner, but rather choose either the Windows download or the Mac download. Go through the installation process. Uh, it should be relatively easy. If you have difficulty, contact your professor. Please do not contact Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. They will just call me uh, and say, why aren't you helping your own students? So call us and we'll walk you through the process if necessary. Uh, email your instructor. Once you have downloaded the software, uh, you'll have something along the lines. It won't be paused at the time, but it'll be a relatively uh, simple, uh, straightforward software program. Uh, that you can use. Uh, the escape button will pause it at any time. You, you will find this uh, useful in that there is, it is a little bit tricky in that once you're in the program, your mouse doesn't leave the actual software unless the game is paused, and then you can see my mouse going off, off your screen here. So be aware of that. Okay, so what we're going to do is a couple of things. What I'd like you to do is look at a couple of the labs before you go in. So you'll notice uh, right on the screen there, uh, W, A, S, and D are the move uh, around the room. The mouse moves, kind of looks around in different directions as I'm doing now. So let's go to the, what they call the dynamics lab. And again, you're not going to do these in detail because we cover these uh, details of, that you'll find in these labs in subsequent courses at the college. When you load into a given area, it's going to ask you if you want to play a tutorial, yes or no. We want you to play each of the tutorials and go through the tutorial for the four labs before we go into the simulated flight. So I'm going to press yes for the first one so you can kind of see how this goes. There's an uh, avatar that comes down that says, welcome to the dynamics lab. You can change your camera view by pressing the button in the camera controls so you can see here. It's going to take you through, okay? To turn on the shake table, you have to press the shake toggle, so it's going to take you through that. It's going to tell you that you have to do the data capture off, and then it's going to tell you to set your X amplitude to 75%. And now set your frequency to 75%. And your Y to 35. Your frequency to 25. Your Z amplitude to 65. 
and your Z frequency to 15. Now, remember you can change position of the camera to look at the screen, to look at the screen and the shake table, and to look at the shake table. If you've captured data, you could export that data into a file. But again, this is going to go well beyond anything we're going to do at this point. And then your tutorial is over. Uh, what I want you to take from this, though, is to think about this for a second as we go through this. Uh, it's going to take us back to the main menu. And again, we can go right back into that lab. So let's go ahead and do that so I can kind of explain what you're looking at here. I want you to kind of look at this and play with it a little bit. Um, turn the table on. Move your X amplitude, your X frequency, your Y. And remember, your X, Y, and Z are the three dimensions uh, often represented in mathematics. Let's change to the table. So theoretically, what you would use something like this for would be put your drone on it as you were building a drone. Uh, and that way you would measure uh, turbulence, uh, you know, ele elevation or ascension of your drone. Uh, pitch, roll, and what it's trying to do, what you would be doing here is to try to gather data when you're building your drone, and we cover this in a later class uh, when we actually build drones, to uh, get a sense of what do you how do you have to calibrate your internal mechanisms, your uh, IMU, uh, your uh, accelerometer, etc. Different components that if you're, this is your first course, you may be like, wow, that's well above my head. And that's okay, because we're going to come back to all that. But what you do need to know is a lot of this is happening in the sky, the shaking. But the drones have been designed and developed to stay steady in, uh, the, um, in the sky. So that's what you're trying to do here. So you're trying to put uh, different drones to the test. You're not going to actually do that. It's just giving you a sense of what one would do. Once you've kind of gone through this lab and fooled around a little bit, go back to your home position. And we'll move forward a little bit to the optics lab. And you can get a sense. Again, I'm not, you're going to play each of these tutorials. I am not. I'm just going to move this and kind of give you a sense. What do we have here? We have our avatar. We have our drone simulated and we have daylight. We can zoom in, as you can see, zoom out. We can set the room temperature. Let's go ahead and set the room temperature. Let's make it an uncomfortable 90 degrees. Let's make the UAS temperature, uh, let's say it's been in the room a while, so it's going to 80 degrees. All right, and then let's turn on our FLIR camera, which is a thermal camera. FLIR is a famous company that makes thermal cameras. They make the, probably, arguably, the best thermal cameras in the world. And what you're looking at is how does room temperature, so as room temperature goes down, but the UAS and the, and the, and the man m remain somewhat in warmer, all right, so we assume the man does not have any kind of disease, so 98 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we have the 80 degree drone. If we turn that up, you'll see it becomes... Uh, even more pronounced, as long as the drone is even a little bit warmer than the room, the thermal camera will work. So go ahead and play around in here, get a sense of everything that's going on, and when you've done that, um, go back to the main screen, the, the home button right here. And remember, part of this is what you're going to use because you're going to do a search and rescue mis autonomous mission at the end of this exercise. So let's go back in. We're a little bit off. Let's go ahead down to the power plant. We'll Go into that lab for a second. All right, so we go up to the door. The E button pops up down at the bottom. You hit E so you can enter. And this will allow you to do all kinds of uh, interesting things with motors. So you can go from an electric motor or an internal combustion or gas motor. You can turn up the throttle. You can set displacement cylinders, the re revolutions per minute, the max revolutions per minute the engine load, the compression, and then look at some outputs here, give you a sense of how much power you're getting. So once again, go through the tutorial, play around a little bit in here. You're just kind of looking at how different engines operate because it's going to help you in your final um, exercise here in this simulation. And then the final thing you'll want to do is go forward to the communicate, well not the final, but the final little Take a look around, take a peek around, get to know the software. Again, play the tutorial, go through that, 
Uh, you're going to come in here. You're going to look at two different kinds of uh, basically antenna for your drone. One is a, the dipole. The other is the dish. You can increase the power, decrease the power, pitch, heading. You can change obstacles to see what is the interference uh, that goes on with these. So if we change the heading a little bit, obviously you're not going to pick up the drone uh, unless the antenna can get a clear signal. So you're going to see different uh, outputs. Uh, it cannot, you'll notice it goes to a negative 110. There is no way to get a radio frequency through a brick wall. Uh, so take a look at this, go through different aspects, see how trees affect radio signal frequency, how walls affect it, and other elements of this lab. Because it, again, it will help you in the final. Now, we're not going to go through any of the crash uh, elements because that is for uh, later classes when you go to graduate school. But what we are going to do is do just a quick simulation in the assembly lab. And I think you'll enjoy this. When you go into the assembly lab, you may or may not get a tutorial. Uh, think about that. Now, what you are trying to do and what your simulation is, is you've played with the uh, quadcopters. You've played with fixed wing drones. Now, your goal is to go into a wooded area and take a look and see if you can find a missing hiker as a simulation. So, the first thing you have to do is unmanned aerial or aircraft vehicle chassis so we're going to go in which one of these are you going to try all right so we have a lot we have a gas propelled uh helicopter which is a very expensive and uh but very good drone you have a basically a kind of build your own as you go along drone you have what they're calling the razor bill which is really very similar to uh, the DG, G, dji uh inspire uh you have a fixed wing uh turn uh, drone, which is a very high-powered fixed-wing drone. You have a drone here called the Harrier Quadrotor, which is very similar to the Parrot uh, Bebop. You have the Condor Octorotor, which is very similar to something like the Unique, and I'm naming drones you're going to find in our lab, very similar to the Unique uh, Tornado, otherwise known as the H920. And you have a couple options, the Tucan Flying Wing Manual and the Tucan Tucan Flying Wing Auto which are very similar to the Parrot Disco, which you'll find in ours. So uh, don't use the helicopter. Use the other drones when you're doing this, but I'm going to use the example of the helicopter here. So I'm going to choose the helicopter, and you can see this can hold quite the payload, so that's great. Now I have to pick components for the drone. So the engine, what kind of engine? Well, they only give me the four-stroke gas engine, so okay, I'm going to select that. Sensor here, I have a couple things. I have an IMU a compass, a humidity sensor, a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, and the RPM. Well, what do I really need data? Well, I, I want the drone to stay level because I'm going to use an autonomous flight. So the first thing I'm going to pick is an IMU, uh, and that's going to help keep the drone level. The next thing I got to pick is a generator. So do I want 80 watt or 100 watt generator? Well, okay. Uh, it doesn't cost me anything, so I'll take the bigger one. Sensor again. Compass, humidity, temperature, pressure, RPM. Well, I definitely want a compass because I'm doing a search and rescue uh, exercise. Control. Do I want manual control or auto control, which requires GPS? Well, I definitely want to do an autonomous mission. So make sure, regardless of the drone that you have, that you have an auto control with GPS. And lo and behold, look what they're going to make you pick in Sensor 5, the GPS module. So now I have GPS, IMU, compass. I can fly an autonomous mission now. But I need some other things. I need a camera. Okay. Well, I can go with this infrared would be FLIR. Then an EO with gimbal, a synthetic aperture, radar, or LIDAR. Well, I'm going to pick, I'm doing a search and rescue. So the first thing I'm going to pick is the infrared sensor. Fuel. Well, why not take 100% fuel? No sense flying with less if it's an option. Camera 2, LIDAR. Battery, because remember, my cameras and such won't run off gasoline. So I have the Extreme 5600 or the Powerhouse um, 10,000. So this is going to tell me how many volts. Uh, it's going to give me how many milliamps. So that's 10,000 milliamps. This is 5600. I'm going to pick the bigger one. Uh, why not have the most power electrical power you can possibly have? 
you have a big drone. This may not be an option on all of them. Uh, so then their altimeter is there. So we're going to take that. An antenna. I'm going to... Can I have a single or I can have the dipole? I'm going to pick the dipole. And then the last sensor, I have, can have a compass, humidity, temperature, pressure, or RPM. Uh, let's pick the RPM sensor and see what happens. Now, I've designed my drone. I've put my components on. Fortunately, I don't have to do any electrical wiring or anything. The software does it all for me. We have another course for that where we'll walk you through. Now, we've done the unmanned aircraft system. Now we need to do the ground control system. So let's turn here. So the ground control chassis. Again, you're going to pick different ones. Uh, but you have your standard handheld remote. You have your briefcase portable. And you even have a trailer for ground control system you can use. I'm, again, going to make this the easiest thing possible for me. I'm going to pick this trailer. I'm going to pick an antenna. I'm going to pick this large dish. Why not? It's available. So you can see. I'm within the payload. I have the maximum communication range, a maximum electrical, maximum endurance. When you're doing your simulation, I don't want you to assume you have an unlimited budget. I want you to try at the lowest, cheapest drone on there. That's probably the Parrot Bebop. And then work your way all the way up to the fixed wing turn to see which one works the best. You should experience a number of crashes as well. Uh, but we want you to go through this simulation so you can see how planning this would lead to other uh the use of other drones depending on the the terrain the geography the area uh, size of the area you're trying to do so let's save this uh real quick i will do uh sim video one and hit save okay so now i have everything ready to go and i'm going to go to where it says fly now, again, you could do an agricultural job. You could do a crash kind of lab and go through. But what we're looking for in this simulation for this course, and you can feel free to use this software um, afterwards, is the missing hiker. That's the lab we kind of want to go through, search and rescue. And it'll take a couple seconds while it's loading up. We do do search and rescue. We don't teach... Well, we do, we do teach thermal in our program, but we rely on a software called Locate, L-O-C, and then the number eight. And Locate, made by Tony Lockley, um, is a, an amazing software that relies on, uh, basically, you can use a commercial off-the-shelf drone and rely on pixelation or pixels to do search and rescue rather than thermal. Thermal is, a, is, a, is rather difficult when you're first using it. Uh, so not, not always would I recommend. All right. So what we're going to do first is you have a couple things here. You can pick your waypoint. So we're going to put down a waypoint home. And then we're going to have a waypoint. And this whole area here could be a missing drone so or a missing hiker, rather. So I'm going to have to fly a waypoint mission. I may have to fly several. So that should get us back. Remember, your, your trailer, in this case, that's what I'm using. My simulated pilot is at the home position. And what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, these are the waypoints I want you to fly, drone. I'm not going to hold the handheld control. I'm going to work the camera. I'm going to move in that direction. But in order for this to work and to not crash way out here, I can't do a straight line out to here because then I'll lose the drone. So I have to kind of bring it in a circle back. So kind of think about that. Uh, we'll see if this works. You're going to probably have to do several iterations to finish this lab, but you'll see. So once we're here, I'm going to set my altitude. I do not want to be. All right. So at let's assume I'm in a mountainous area. So. 30 feet, 30 meters uh, is about 300 feet. So I'm probably going to, let's, let's do this at, this is different drones. You'll do it different sizes. Let's do it at 20 meters and see what happens. Let's look at a speed. And again, you're on meters per second. So let's do 20. Let's just do 20 and 20. You'll, you'll try several different, uh, machinations of that if you will 
and then I'm going to hit fly. All right, then it'll take me to my search and rescue. My drone's going to take off. Hopefully, I have enough altitude. All right, now I can switch to my fle FLIR. If I want to use thermal, I can push my, you can see my trailer there. And we're moving nice and slow. I can move my camera around. Maybe I want to see which direction I'm going in. And what I'm looking for is a missing hiker. Now remember, this will work well in terms of search and rescue uh, when we are dealing with searching for someone who's still giving off a heat signature. Some of the times in our area, in a place like New Jersey, we don't have that luxury of the heat signature uh, because of the cold, which is why sometimes the pixelation uh, might make sense. Now, why I'm doing this, I don't see a hiker at this moment, but I can go to a normal camera, which would be your red, green, blue camera, and we go over this in photography class. Hopefully, I won't hit one of these trees. I can zoom in. If I'm looking, and it is possible to look for the hiker in the daylight in this. This uh, I can look at lidar. It's probably not going to give me as much information. And I can look at the pilot view, which is the visual line of sight. And there I see my drone right there. Uh, that's probably again not going to help me find the hiker. Um, and we'll see if we're going to crash into this tree. We may not be at a proper altitude. This will give you a little hint that you need to be higher to fulfill the mission. Some good tall trees in this area. Now, you're just doing a basic, probably clip that tree, uh, <laughs> some basic uh, kind of search and rescue, but you could definitely put the wind up. You could make it harder on yourself, putting the wind speed up. You could fog, uh, bring in a, a lot of fog into the area, uh, and play with these, restart, go back to the assembly, back to your plan, take a photo. All right, and I see I have a saved image if I thought I saw someone. I promise you there are hikers here. Now, what's your goal? Your goal is to look for the hiker. Once you've spotted the hiker, um, and you can see there's there's some kind of thermal imaging going on over here. Maybe turn on the normal view. Turn our camera. Can't really make it out there. That may be something to consider. Um, because this is an autonomous mission, you can't redirect without going back to the starting point. But you can see there's some kind of fire. That would be definitely something that if you were in a live scenario, you'd want to look for. So let's say for the sake of simulation, the hiker was right here. What you're going to do at this point, once you have that, is record your latitude and longitude and your elevation. These three, and you're going to email, and you'll notice they change as you go along. When you've located your hiker, you're going to email your instructor the latitude, longitude, and elevation that, of where you found the hiker. and then we will be able to fulfill the assessment requirement for this simulation lab. But have some fun. This is an interesting software. If you explore it, you should be able to find things. If you have difficulty or don't understand, reach out to your instructor. We'll give you some more direction. Again, we're not trying to make this difficult. We're just trying to simulate various uh, components of unmanned aircraft system and unmanned system operations that you may experience uh, as you go along. Also, kind of keep in mind, if you set the speed higher at the very beginning, you're going to move through this quicker. So we may have, in fact, set the speed too low at 20 meters per second. So we may like want to move faster we may say okay that altitude was too low let's set that at 50 meters and fly 
That way we don't have to worry about crashing into one of the trees. And here we go. And again. We can move our camera. In various ways. Looking for your hiker. And you'll move a little faster. So you get the basic sense of it. I don't want to find the hiker for you. I want you to do that. I want to, I wanted you to kind of experience the, the various different labs. Again, not so you will completely understand everything that's going on in every lab in great detail, but just so you have a little bit of an experience and a little bit of a general idea of optics, communication, uh, assembly, uh, just just a sense of different components that are available in unmanned aircraft and what we will do from here is this will end your simulation exercises you'll complete your course and hopefully we'll see you in another warren community college course on drones otherwise have a wonderful wonderful day good luck flying good luck finding your hiker and best wishes for all your future educational endeavors